The reign of the Tudor king Edward VI should have been a long and prosperous one, and on his deathbed his father, King Henry VIII, would have dreamed of his son securing the future of the Tudor dynasty for centuries. But this was not to be, as at the age of 15, Edward VI died, which shocked the nation. He was known for being a rather sickly young king, but his reign changed England forever. It's considered that Edward, as he was still a boy, did not have a full say over changes to religion that occurred during his reign, and it's believed that the Regency Council set up to govern England, until he was of age, were the ones who called the shots, turning England further Protestant. But Edward's short reign is remembered for these large-scale religious changes, continuing the English Reformation began by his father. But what happened when the young king passed away? Join us today as we look at the painful death of King Edward VI, the boy Tudor King. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. At around 2am on the 12th of October 1537, inside one of the rooms of Hampton Court Palace, Jane Seymour, the third wife of Henry VIII, gave birth to a healthy son that was described as the most beautiful boy that ever was seen. This was the moment King Henry VIII had been waiting for. Over 20 years of disappointment had given him in the eyes a legitimate male heir to continue the Tudor dynasty. The king, overjoyed, rode to Hampton Court to meet his son, and across the country there were huge celebrations. Three days later inside the chapel of Hampton Court, the christening for the young boy took place, and the child was christened Edward. However, the boy that Henry wished for so much would reign for only six and a half years, and it would be his shunned half-sister Elizabeth who would become the greatest Tudor monarch of all. Edward spent the early years of his life inside of Hampton Court, but there was great upset following his birth after his mother Jane Seymour passed away. This caused the king to be very distraught, as it's believed Jane passed away from postnatal complications. He was kept at Hampton Court, as it was believed the air was cleaner outside of the centre of London, and he was noted to have been a rather happy and healthy child. His governess wrote, in March 1539, with Edward around 18 months old, that my Lord Prince is in good health and merry. Would to God the King and your Lordship had seen him last night. The minstrels played, and his grace danced and played so wantonly that he could not stand still. He was raised amongst women, however as he reached his sixth birthday things changed, as the Tudors believed this was the age when a child became an adult. Because of this, Henry VIII ordered that his son's household and apartments should be changed so that they were exactly the same as his, and he ordered huge Flemish tapestries to adorn the walls. Edward's childhood was spent having the finest humanist education, in a well-protected environment, and his health was monitored very heavily by the royal doctors who checked up on him. They were very worried about anything that could go wrong, and if Edward did not eat something it would be noted down. Edward was given a rather rich diet, and it was said that in October 1541, that the prince was handsome and well fed, and also was very tall for his age. It was also said that his posture was a little off, saying his right shoulder was lower than his left, leading to the fact that the young prince may have had scoliosis of the spine. This condition was in the family, as his maternal uncle Edward Seymour did suffer from this. In the very same month, Edward became ill, and suffered with a fever and illness today that would be referred to as malaria. Edward was incredibly sick, and it looked like he was going to die, and this caused great upset to King Henry VIII. He sent his own royal doctor to see Edward, and he visited the prince regularly, and gave him soups and broths and no meat. He was kept on a boring diet of food, and because of this, Edward became annoyed, as he did not have the food he was accustomed to. He even called the doctor a fool, and questioned his skills, but this feistiness was a sign that he was recovering. After ten days of being gravely ill, he did recover from illness, and then he returned to his carefree lifestyle following this. After the death of King Henry VIII, Edward inherited the throne, becoming king on the 28th of January 1547, and being coronated on the 20th of February. But following becoming king, Edward was stricken by a mysterious illness that confined him to his bed. Again, those who were close to the king did not expect him to survive, and the doctors even decided he was a lost cause. This news was incredibly secret, but Edward, within a few weeks, had once again recovered, and it was noted he took part in hunts shortly after. But in the spring of 1552, the doctors became concerned yet again, as Edward was sick with smallpox. This was a very deadly disease that was common within Tudor England, 
and his father and sister, Elizabeth, caught it during their lives but managed to survive. For Edward, though, his fight against smallpox was short-lived, and he recovered rather quickly. When he met with an Italian astrologer in October 1552, it was said how the king was very short-sighted, and also a little deaf, and to read the boy did wear glasses. He was known to have been given eye drops in the form of some mixture also for his eyes. But in December 1552, this is where things went very downhill for King Edward VI. Edward began to show signs he was suffering from tuberculosis, and it's believed that a bout of measles could also have left him immunosuppressed and allowed him to become infected with TB. Tuberculosis, known as consumption, was a horrific illness that claimed the lives of many and it did not discriminate. On the 16th of February 1553, Edward became very sick with a cold that caused a fever. During this time, Princess Mary, his eldest half-sister, came to visit him to reconcile their differences, but Edward was stuck in bed with a horrific cough. There were rumours in the king's household that he could have been poisoned, and there was a lot of secrecy about Edward's illness. A number of people were summoned to visit the king to try and help him, and one woman whose identity was not known said she could cure him but she did no such thing. She administered a number of potions and ointments that soon made Edward worse and caused his arms and legs to swell. Edward was not looking very well at all, and as March came he remained ill. For around a month he had not left his bedroom, and it was said that to move the king was very dangerous. But he did seem to recover slightly in April, where he enjoyed a number of walks inside of Westminster Park on days where the weather was good, and then he was moved on April 11th, 1553, to Greenwich Palace to escape the dirty air of central London. He was seen inside the gardens by members of the public the following day, but by this time he was getting worse. His cough was still prominent, and he was coughing up horrific smelling and different coloured liquid. Sometimes it was green or yellow, but in other times it was a colour of blood, showing that Edward's lungs were in great trouble. By May 1553, it was believed that the air would help the king, and the doctors at this time believed he would make a full recovery, but the doctors believed he was suffering from a tumour in his lung. His stomach also swelled, and he began to get bed sores from being in bed for a lot of time. When he met with the French ambassadors on the 17th of May, it was said that the king looked weak, and he coughed throughout the meeting. But by the end of May, he was going rapidly downhill, and was given medication to help him sleep. Edward did make arrangements for his succession, he would disinherit his two half-sisters and name his cousin Lady Jane Grey and her heirs as successors to the throne to avoid Princess Mary becoming queen and restoring England to Catholicism. On the 10th of June the situation looked bleak and Edward was given three days to live by his doctors, as it was stated that he could not keep anything in his stomach. He was afflicted with a fever that would not break and on the 15th of June this in particular was very bad. It did go away briefly for 24 hours, but came back two days later, and Edward's body was so weak, it could not fight the infection or disease. He could not get up, and his legs were incredibly swollen. It was said by the 29th of June, Edward had had enough, and five days later he could not breathe well, and did not wake up much. It was also said his hair and nails were falling out, and he was covered in scabs. The last few days of the young boy King were incredibly painful, and he was simply just waiting for his death. On the 1st of July 1553, he did appear at windows in the palace to stop people spreading rumours that he'd already died, but he was dishevelled and looked a shadow of his former self. Over the next few days, more crowds would gather to catch a glimpse of the king, but he did not come out. It was Sir Henry Sidney who remained with King Edward in his final moments. Before Edward could not speak, Sidney told him to pray to God to stop England from returning to Catholicism, and it was noted that he wished his English subjects to die as Protestants. It was said Edward prayed, Lord God deliver me out of this miserable and wretched life, and take me amongst thy chosen, howbeit not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, I commit thy spirit to thee. O Lord, thou knowest how happy it were for me to be with thee, yet for thy chosen's sake, send me of life and health, that I may serve truly thee. O my Lord God, bless thy people, and save thine inheritance. O Lord God, save thy chosen people of England. O my Lord God, defend this realm from papistry, and maintain thy true religion, that I and my people may praise thy holy name for thy Son Jesus Christ's sake. The Bishop of Ely, Thomas Goodrich, then heard Edward's last confession, 
and on the 6th of July, 1553, between 8 and 9 in the evening, King Edward VI died in the arms of Sir Henry Sidney. It was said that his last words were, I am faint, Lord have mercy upon me and take my spirit. Following his death, a surgeon opened up the king's chest and stated that he had died from lung disease, as the lungs had two large ulcers and these had turned infected. It's believed that tuberculosis was what caused the king's illness, or that the king suffered from a pulmonary infection which affected his lungs. At the time for this there was no treatment, meaning that the infection would have caused damage to the lungs and caused abscesses. This infection would have wreaked havoc in his body, and septicemia would have caused his organs to shut down. With this we don't know for certain what killed King Edward VI, but it's believed to have been mostly TB, and for this we can agree that Edward's death was incredibly painful. Following his passing, Lady Jane Grey was summoned and declared Queen, however nine days later she was deposed by Princess Mary, who became Queen Mary I. Edward was buried inside of Henry VII's Lady Chapel inside of Westminster Abbey on the 8th of August 1553. It was said that the procession was led by a great company of mourners and that the crowds mourned their king greatly. Edward's reign was incredibly short and was not what his father wished for him when he was born, but it did signal a large amount of change in England. However, he was a sickly young man, and his death at such a young age must have been horrific for the young boy Tudor King of England. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.